What is up, guys? Sumi here with ThoughtCast, and today I want to talk about how they did not break your heart. A lot of times when we go through a breakup, we think that people did us dirty. It's very easy to point the finger and say, oh, you broke my heart. You did this to me. You, you betrayed me. It's very easy to do that. But the biggest thing that's going to allow you to grow and elevate from the situation is maturity and understanding and being accountable to what you did. They didn't break your heart. You broke your heart. You decided to invest your time, your energy, your effort, your resources into a person that you knew would betray you. You saw the red flags. You went on dates with them. Or maybe you didn't go on enough dates with them and you did not see the red flags because you didn't do your groundwork. See, anytime we let somebody into our life, anytime we decide to date somebody and get emotional with somebody, that's a choice. It's actually a series of decisions. So when you say that this person broke your heart, you decided that this person would not break your heart simultaneously and that's why you have that trust in them. But you have to understand that you can look at a person and you can analyze them over a period of time to understand who they are. There's a lot of rules out there. Let's talk about the three-month rule for a second here where 90 days is typically a period of time where they'll start to show who they really are. This is a good rule. I'm not saying it's bad, but there's a lot of mindsets out there where the longer you spend with someone, the more they're going to show you of who they are. So first and foremost, I want you to understand that like you did not get your heart broken you broke your own heart by yourself by doing what you did, by choosing that relationship, by chasing negativity, by engaging in someone that would not be good for you. This is the most mature mindset that you're going to have when it comes to leaving a relationship and getting through a breakup. So first and foremost, I want to talk about accountability. You've got to be accountable to the faults that you made in the relationship and the decisions that you made to choose this person. I've had exes that cheated on me and, and, and you know engage in infidelity and stuff like that, right? And I could sit here and say, oh, these people betrayed me. They stabbed me in the back. They broke my trust. But I look at myself for choosing these people. I look at myself for engaging these situations. I knew that these girls were up to no good. I knew that something was going on, but I stayed in it because I love them, because I wanted things to work so badly, because I just hoped that you know, they would change their behavior. If I, if I showed them how much I love them, they, they would change, but no. Nah. It's the first thing. You got to take accountability. I chose that. I engaged in that. I dated a girl that was not mature, that was not loyal enough, and that's my fault. That's my fault. When you hire a bad employee into a business and they mess up, it's the boss's fault. It's not the employee's fault. It's easy to blame the employee and say, oh, you did this. Like The, the, the customer you know, has to get an apology from you. No, it's the boss. You know, When something goes bad at like a police department, for example, like a, a police officer does something bad. We see this on the news all the time. The chief of police comes on and say, hey, that's not the, the conduct we, we want to do here. You know? It's not representative of us, but he takes the blame, right? Because he has to. It's his fault for bringing that person in, for trusting that person in the position that he put them into, and for allowing that to happen without checks and balances. So it's, it's my fault. Number two, you got to stop trying to change people. You know, a lot of times when we get in a relationship, we feel like someone should change for us because we're, we're dating them. If they love me enough, they would. I'm his girlfriend. I'm, his, I'm their boyfriend. They should change for me. They should do this for me. They don't have to do anything for you, respectfully, right? People don't have to do anything for you. Anything that someone gives you is a benefit, is amazing, it's good, and you should be grateful for it. You should not expect anything from anybody, and I mean this in, in the most serious way. When you start to think that someone should do things for you because you're in a position of this and that, that's where you're failing in leadership and you're failing in the commitment. So when you date somebody, right? You are choosing that person for who they are. You have to like the person of who they are right now and who they can be in the future. It has to be both. So if you don't like certain things about them right now, you need to be very upfront with them right off the beginning to let them know, hey, I don't like this about you. If that person is vaping or doing certain drugs or they have a negative habit or they're doing something that you don't like, you got to let them know, hey, I don't support this and I don't want to have this in a relationship. So if we can't solve this right now, if you can't change this right now, it may not be a good fit for us. Keeping it real with you. This is the mature way to handle that kind of stuff. Another thing I want to talk about is their heart was broken, and a lot of times when we go into serious heartbreak, it's because we don't love ourselves enough. It sounds cringy and corny, but it is what it is. You have to have love for yourself. You have to have compassion for yourself. You have to treat yourself in a way where you are like the main character of your own video game. I mean this. So when someone disrespects you or someone does something bad for you, you have to understand like, hey, look, I got to let you go. I don't want to be in a relationship with someone that doesn't want to be in a relationship with me. And I don't want to be in a relationship with someone that does not treat me well. 
I don't want to engage with someone that is not going to be loyal to me and that is not going to be good to me. And the moment they show me that they're not going to be good to me, I have to choose myself over that situation. I separate myself from the partnership and I am myself again and I choose myself again. A lot of us dwell over the negative partners and the people that did us dirty because we don't love ourselves enough. We're insecure. We feel like this person is better than us. And that's why we hold on to it so hard because this person is better than us in our perceived mind. But they're not. They're just a person. There's nothing that's special about them, and there's nothing that's not special about them either. They're just a regular person. Let go of the idea that this person is amazing and better than you. Appreciate them for what they do for you. But you have to understand that there's so many people out there in this world that are compatible with you, that will be amazing for you, that will be better for you, and you've got to really open your mind up to that abundance mentality. When you start operating from scarcity in a relationship, you start to fixate, obsess, become so available and become needy and become more so controlling of this person. And that person will start to lose interest in you because they're unattracted to the obsession that you have with them and they're unattracted to the overwhelming nature of that love in itself. It's not good for them. It's not good for you. It's not good for the partnership. So you must understand that you must love yourself first. I want you all to, when you go through like a difficult situation of a heartbreak, you have to realize that sometimes they wanted to work sometimes they wanted to work just as much as you did. They wanted it to work. They loved you at a period in time and they probably still do to some degree, but it's just not meant to be. And that is so hard to do. It's so hard to let go of someone when you love them and you care about them. But sometimes it's just not meant to work out. Sometimes it's a situation where it just isn't going to ever work. Play out the scenario in your head of the conversation with them. Think about what they're going to say in response to you being critical of them. It probably isn't going to go well. More than anything, I'll say this. If someone is unhappy with me, I don't want them to waste a second being unhappy with me than being happier with somebody else. Like, I want them to be happy. The reason that someone should date me and be with me is because I make them happy and I bring some level of value in their life. I promise you. I don't, I don't want someone to be miserable with me. It's a very, very bad reflection on me. It looks bad for them, and it's bad for the partnership as a whole. So you never want someone to be with you if they're unhappy. If they're unhappy with you, let them go. Let them walk away. Let them go find what they want to find and let that be it. So I appreciate you guys spending time with me today. I appreciate you guys taking this time out to, you know, learn about yourself, about getting better. Shout out to you guys for, for being committed to your self-growth. Shout out to K&D for allowing us to use this beautiful penthouse. If you're ever in Cleveland and need an apartment, hit me up, hit K&D up. They can get you in, you know, they'll set you up and I can put you in touch with people. They have an amazing portfolio of amazing downtown properties here. Shout out to Candy for making this happen because they really allow us to bring the message to you. If you guys ever want to connect with me, the links are down in the description below. You're more than welcome to reach out to me on social media. It might take me a little bit to respond. I get a lot of messages, but I will respond. So I appreciate all you guys. Love you guys. And until next time, sue me out.